Most people think that the key to scaling and growing a business is marketing and sales. And I'm here to tell you that most of the time, that's not the case whatsoever. Beyond your paycheck, it's surges of cash that you can use to grow your net worth and feed your investments. Hey, I'm Chris Moore. I'm your intentional investor and I focus my professional career all around creating surges of income and teaching others to do the same as well. And surges of income come from the sale of a business, sale of a property, quarterly profit distributions, and learning really good digital marketing skills where you can sell a lot of products, like at a product launch or an event, all at one time creating a windfall of income that's completely separate from your normal monthly income that you use to pay your bills and your life expenses. So that's what we focus here on this channel and I'm about to jump into my three-step framework on how to grow and scale any business and I'm about to share it exclusively with you. So there's a three-step framework that I use when I evaluate businesses, whether I'm consulting, looking to acquire or start it, and I'm looking for these three things to be true that make sales and marketing really easy. And what I find that most of the time when I take on a consulting client or I'm trying to help someone grow their business or maybe diagnose what's going wrong, they're missing three ingredients specifically, and that's what I'm gonna go over today. And if you get these things plugged into a business, if it's possible, the business will grow and scale much easier and you don't even need as good of marketing or sales initiatives. So number one, a business needs to be able to have more prospects than it can possibly handle. And what I find often when I go in to take over a business or consulting for a business, they're really having to make every opportunity count. They don't have a lot of prospects. They don't have a machine that's bringing them leads constantly, lead generation allows you to have a lot more opportunity to grow. Even if you don't have a great sales process yet, and you haven't fully paved the path to purchase for your company, when you have more prospects than you can possibly handle, it allows you to not have to make every opportunity count as much. Instead, you can have errors, you can flub phone calls, and it allows you to kind of work its way out. So when I take over a business, if I notice that they don't have a really good lead generation, they don't have a steady stream of prospects, and specifically the right customer avatar, that's the first thing that I look to plug into a business because when you have more opportunity than you can possibly handle, it's very difficult to fail. Okay, number two, we wanna make sure that the customer satisfaction rate is at least 10X. We want people to feel like they would have paid 10 times more for what they bought because of the value they received. And when that's in place, it allows you to have stronger customer retention. It allows you to have a much better referral system in play from the customers that have already come to you or clients who are gonna refer you more business. And it just feels like people will want to be with you and work with you for a long time. Value's huge. Think about brands that really have built their business on value, like Chick-fil-A, and companies like Apple, things where you feel like you're getting a lot of value for the money. And that brings me to my third point. I like to have businesses and what I look for being able to implement is to never go on sale again. Value driven businesses like the Chick-fil-A's, like the Apple, they don't have to go on sale. They never go on discount because people are paying for the value. It allows you to be more of a premium product and not have to compete on price. And you're not competing to go out of business faster than somebody else. Because think about companies that were really doing well for many, many years, like a Ruby Tuesday. And what you may not know is Ruby Tuesday is down to very few locations left. And sure, a lot of things have changed inside the restaurant business, going from casual dining to fast casual. But one of the things that Ruby Tuesday did that I think was a grave mistake is they created a crack cocaine-like dependency on coupons. And what they did in their marketing and sales initiatives is they started using direct mail and sending out buy one, get one free entrees to people in the neighborhoods geo-targeted around their locations. Brilliant. Well. Not really, it did create a windfall of new clients, it did uh, create a windfall of revenue and people coming into the to the business to eat, but what they also did is that crack cocaine like, Y'all tell anybody I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Like dependency, they only did business with them when they were on sale, they only went to Ruby Tuesday when they got the coupon because it was such a great value to get buy one, get one free. And what happens is they cut their margins in half and that was something that really makes it difficult to be able to scale a business when you're creating a dependency on being on sale. If you're trying to race somebody else to go out of business, follow that model, it works really well. But if you wanna be a business where you don't have to have your salespeople who are demoralized because everyone wants a discount or you don't have to put something on promotion and send out all these emails and blast people just to get new revenue in the door, build a business based off value, 
not off price. And the businesses that I'm involved in, and the businesses that I consult for, have to be focused on that to really be able to take it to the next level. So let's go back through the one through three. Number one, you have to have more prospects and more leads than you can possibly handle. I really like this because this is utilizing marketing and you need to bring in an expert to have this happen. Uh, one of the things that we see when this is difficult or it's not possible is when you have a very small target market. Obviously this isn't gonna work as well, but you need to have a way to get as many prospects in the door as humanly possible. Otherwise it's gonna be really difficult. And during the sales process, you have to close at a very high closing rate to be able to hit the numbers you're looking for compared to having even a lackluster sales team or a lackluster sales process. When you have all the prospects you can handle, you can have lower conversion rates and still hit your numbers. Also think about people don't buy right away. Think about buy cycles. Maybe some people buy for certain products right away. Other way, times it could be a year long sales cycle, right? So depending on your business and the type of business that we're talking about, it's different. So you wanna fill up the pipeline with all these prospects and you wanna nurture them and send them emails and you wanna stay in front of them while they're still creating the decision to do business with you. Right? So if you have more prospects than you can possibly handle and they're all at different stages of the sales cycle, you're gonna create a large pipeline and that swell will feed you for a long, long time. That also allows you to have revenue, it allows you to have more revenue and, and more profit in the door right away that will feed your growth and feed your reinvestment in your people, feed reinvestment in your sales process and your sales team and your customer experience and your retention. And when you couple that with the second thing, which is creating a customer experience where people say, I would have paid 10 times more than what I did because of the value I received, it's a pretty powerful thing. And then number three, obviously, never go on sale again because you don't have to when you build a value-driven business. So let's go to value-driven business number two and specifically being able to get that 10x satisfaction rate and let's talk about what does that exactly mean. When someone comes into your business, you need to look at the customer experience, not just the marketing and the message, not just the sales process, but also the indoctrination period and the onboarding process for your new customers or clients. And this is interesting because you may say, well, Chris, I own a chicken wing restaurant. How is that relevant to me? It's everything. Your customer experience is every single part of the, of the process of everything the customer sees. How good are the people who are talking to them when they're taking their order or paying at the cashier? How clean is your restaurant? How uh, good of a location is it? Is your parking lot well lit? Is your presentation of your food consistent and amazing and tastes great? And do they feel like they had enough value? Like, wow, this is the best meal I ever had. I can't believe it was only $6. That's the type of concepts we're talking about here. Switch over to a different type of business. Imagine you're doing a B2B firm and let's just say you have a CPA or an accounting firm. The same thing applies. When you onboard a new client, when you're in the phase of talking about working with them, the full experience and how much value you provide to them, how it's so much better than anything else they've ever experienced. If you focus and hone in on the customer experience and make sure that it is incredibly valuable and you're educating them and you're making them feel welcome and you make them feel like you're really wanting their business and they're needed and you actually are more proactive about counseling them and helping them make smarter decisions, they're going to find that as one of the best experiences they've ever had working with any accounting firm. And that's what we're looking for is that 10X satisfaction rate. And when you have that 10X satisfaction rate, growth is actually really easy because you can build a referral engine. You can build an engine of people who are going out there as your advocate saying, this is the best accounting firm I've ever worked with. Anytime someone says something like, hey, I'm looking for a new C CPA or somebody to do my taxes, do you have a, a referral? They will be jumping over themselves to tell them about your business. And that's the key to really perfecting the customer experience, okay? So wrapping this all up, I have a three-step process. Let's go back to the very beginning. I said marketing and sales is not always the best way to grow a business. Marketing and sales is great, but the best marketing and the best sales with an underdeveloped business or an underdeveloped customer experience or a business that relies on just promos and, and, and giveaways and different coupons to grow, you're gonna have a hard time. So my specific advice to you watching this, if you're a business owner, is go back and look at that and say, can I apply Chris's three-step framework 
to my business? Can I start focusing most of my energy on lead generation and getting the right people and getting enough prospects for my salespeople uh, to be able to work through and really grow that way? Because you can add a lot of fuel to the fire just by having a lot more prospects. Even if your numbers are crap, even if your conversion rates are really not that good, if you add a lot more fuel to the fire, you will see a benefit from it. And that takes some pressure off you and allows you to go in and focus on just tweaking each little thing and making it better. I'll tell you a quick story. When I started working with Carl Allen at Dealmaker Well Society, we didn't have a lot of lead flow. Just the way the business was going at that time, there weren't a lot of new leads. The first thing I did is just flood the business with new leads. Actually, in the last 12 months, we haven't raised how much ad spend we spend one time. We're still spending the amount and we've 10x the business. And that's because we bought ourselves some time. We had more prospects than we can possibly handle continuously for the last 17 months. But then we went in and completely refined every single part of the customer experience. We refined the sales process. We refined the type of people that were hiring for salespeople. We refined everything about it and we were able to buy ourselves some time. So I'm telling you, it's almost impossible to fail if you go back and look at your business and say, what would have to be true for me to put enough leads in this business so I have more prospects than I can possibly handle. Number two, go look at the customer experience. Go secret shop yourself. Go hire a secret shopper and say, I want to see what the customer sees through their eyes. And then stop there and say, what can I do at every single interaction with the customer and through the customer journey and experience and make it absolutely amazing? What value can I add to this process that's going to make people want to come back and, and spend money with us over and over and over again? And I know depending on the type of business, the customer interaction is different, but I'm telling you it's important in every business. I don't care if you own a fast food or a wing restaurant or you have a B2B manufacturing firm that makes toilet seats. It doesn't matter. It's extremely important because people have a conscious decision they can make to do business with you or do business with someone else. And not everyone's price conscious. And here's the deal. You're going to start pushing away the customers that are not going to be a good fit for you. People who are just focused on price these Groupon shoppers, they're not going to want to do business with you anymore. And that's okay because your frequency of purchase, your average customer value, your lifetime customer value will start to rise when you have the right people coming into your business. So that's my video. I'm so excited that you're here with me. Once again, Chris Moore, I have a Surges of Income podcast. I'd love to have you come watch that. Maybe have you as one of my guests one time where I literally mentor people live off the cuff on YouTube exclusively. And we're talking about their business. We're talking about things that they're looking to do. We're going through um, different simulations or picking my brain. We're talking about business acquisitions and what we're doing with Carl Allen, but it's all focused around how can you get surges of income in your life? How can you get large amounts of money? How do you build a business so it's built to sell so you can sell it and get a lot of money from it? How do we invest in real estate? How do we flip properties? How do we unlock lots of cash where we can literally grow our net worth using funds outside of our normal income stream? So let's face it. When you're making $20,000 a month, over time, your cost of living and inflation is going to continue to rise. So it's really tough to save your way to being rich. So surges of income allows you to invest a lot faster, put a lot more money towards your investments by unlocking surges of income all at one time. So I really would consider subscribing to me, liking my videos, and I'm really, really excited for you to come watch my surges of income podcast, and I will see you in the next video. Please consider watching my surges of income video where I explain it in detail. You can click this button here and get to the video. Also, if you have some questions, you have some comments, please let me know. I want to hear from you. Do you want to be mentored live by me on my podcast? Let me know in the comments below. Watch that video on surges of income and I will see you in the next video.